What is going on guys, Bisectatron here, bringing you guys today's video, and this is kind of a special one. Usually don't have guests on the channel, but today I'm joined by Sir Iron of Dark Looters. Uh, he agreed to come on the channel and talk a little bit about Clash with me, just discussing kind of the esports aspect of it at Town Hall 12, and also about uh, how his clan Dark Looters is trying to get voted into the Clash of Clans World Championship coming up very soon. So, uh, Sir Iron, thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So, uh, yeah, let's just get started. I want to just talk a little bit about Dark Looters because uh, it's it's a good opportunity to have uh, a team that's actually qualified for the uh, Poland qualifier on the channel and kind of get some insight. So. Tell me a little bit about how your Dark Looters team formed, because it's only uh, five people, right? Yeah, so basically I will like start from the get-go. So basically Dark Looters has a long history, um, has been there many years in the war community. And for example, also won season one and two of the Champions War League. And um, after those two seasons, Dark Looters kind of took a break. But um, now, um, we kind of came back. Um, then th there was recently um, Daglutus' name changed um, to Tribe Gaming, which maybe quite a few people know. Um, so five from us are now like in the Tribe Gaming team. Um, the whole tournament is built on teams um, out of five people. So that means they have one team um, in the in the competition as Tribe Gaming. But the rest of us kind of kept going um, and like wanted to um, keep playing at the highest level of competition. That's why we kept playing in the Supercell CBL. And um, yeah, that's and then when we qualified for Poland again, we obviously had to like find a new name because it's impossible to have two tribe gaming teams. Um, and then we obviously picked our um name we had before which is dark looters and that's basically how dark looters came back right okay. um so, yeah exactly so um because i was wondering uh, about tribe gaming uh, obviously that's the team itsu is on and kind of some of the high profile uh team members do, do you guys like practice together at all or are you totally separate um i mean obviously like in in the preparation going um like in, by the qualifiers and stuff obviously it was like teamwork um like obviously you, you work together there's other team you practice together uh and obviously you just play together you on voice together so obviously we know them quite well and um it could be good for us that we know them well if we face them for example or also good for them if they face us um that would definitely be an interesting situation um but yeah i think we we play uh, together quite a lot but um i mean after those five guys qualified uh, in the first qualifier they weren't allowed to play with us in the supercell um supercell cwl uh, in the clan league right. and uh, we put up like a team without them and i mean if you just look at the numbers out of the remaining five qualifiers we made it four times um in the top 20 and twice to poland which means the top four clans um so like we, we definitely showed that even without those five guys we still have the quality to be up there and that we deserve a spot just by showing how good we are sure so you mentioned a little bit about uh preparing for qualifying stages um and like can you go through kind of in a typical month um, how you would go about preparing because I, I believe you guys do both the uh, SCWL in-game War League and then also the ESL 5v5 tournament so I guess for either of those uh, on a given month how are you preparing bases and whatnot to get ready to uh, try to qualify that month? Yeah, um, as, as you mentioned, basis is a huge part of it. Um, I mean, it's just preparation in general. Um, you, like in Super CSUL, like once you find clans, you kind of know who you face because you see those 
um, other clans which are in your group and you can kind of prepare if you know them if you don't you're kind of in the dark but you still have to um, prepare prepare your best bases um, and yeah just win every war because you have to win every war to be uh, to end up on the top um, and then it's just about planning together on voice uh, we spend a lot of time on voice we share our plans um, and we talk over them we always have someone who spots the plan um, and and that's huge yeah part of it how how to be um, able to play on top and um, basically the um, supercell CDL starts the beginning of the month so we prepare for that and then like I think two weeks uh, after that or like one week after that it's the ESL qualifier and for that you kind of need new bases because the bases will probably be burned by then mm -hmm. um, so that means most of the times you need a new set of bases for that and yeah you don't really know who you're going to face and um, you can't really yeah, adjust uh, on, on your opponents because you will basically just know who you face on that day so you don't have any option to change the base um, so yeah you just have to have good bases for everything which is quite impossible but um, you have to try your best and test the bases and keep tweaking them until they are the best you can build them so that's yeah, kind of how we prepare and how many and uh, how much time would you say each each like day or each week you spend uh, testing bases and other preparation? Um, I mean, it depends, um, but I think like before the ESL qualifiers, uh, for example, we had like weeks where we definitely spent like, I mean, we still have to go to work and school <laughs> and everything, right. um, but we definitely had days where we were like five, six, seven hours on voice and playing together and building and testing and tweaking. Um, so yeah, it does, does take a lot of time, but I mean, it's fun, so why why yeah. not? Yeah, so one thing I'm, I'm wondering uh, that I, it's hard, I haven't gotten like a full answer to, um, when you're in the Champs 1 War League, in the, uh, the in-game War League system, how well do you actually have to do to be a top four clan and qualify? Because obviously there's a ton of clans in champs one so just winning your own group of eight clans isn't going to be enough um so like how many stars or like how badly do you have to beat all these clans to actually qualify do you think um i mean i i we can kind of like look at the numbers we had and we obviously were also like following closely how the other clans scored and um what kind of like the standings are um and what I what we obviously noticed after the update with the heroes hero extra levels, um, obviously like the triple rate went way up, um, like there were way more triples, and I think uh, I'm I might not be completely right, but I think you needed like sixty triples in in the week to to be somewhere like in the top ten. Um, obviously, there were some clans with outstanding uh, scores like uh, Nova uh, multiple times. They had like I don't know sometimes probably like up to 80 triples and barely any one stars um, so yeah you, you kind of need to score at that level so you basically need like an average of seven or like maybe eight triples every war um, okay. which is which is quite insane because you basically need to hit at a 50% hit rate or higher um, so yeah, that's that's kind of the score which you needed to compete up there. And then also on top of that, which I think we did very well, you barely can allow any one stars um, because right. every one star is, yeah, it's just devastating. It's so, like taking a triple um, away, yeah. Yeah, basically, basically that. And yeah, I mean, it's basically taking two triples away um, if you like want to, to get on the same level like another clan like if they get a triple obviously like it's two stars less than a triple yeah. and it's like well, one star is also very tough for the motivation because this go wants to like the entire clan is kind of like oh come, come on guys this sucks and it's hard to pick it up afterwards um but yeah i think we managed to to keep the one star um the one stars yeah uh, very low like I, I think we barely had any one stars we had one stars um, because anything can happen, like you can't prevent everything. 
but um, yeah, I think we, we did very well on that part and it's the entire team which worked hard and everyone yeah, just planned together, voice and that's, yeah, it's just crucial to work together as a team. So um, you guys qualified a few times. Can you tell me like just briefly how the experience was in Poland uh, the few days you were there for the, uh, the offline qualifiers? Yeah, it was pretty amazing. Um, I mean, maybe some people know, but I was, for example, also in Estonia um, for, for for the season three finals um, of the Champions War League. And now I was in, in July in Katowice, Poland. And it just felt, I mean, Estonia was nice, like, don't get me wrong, but this was like more professional, better organized. Um, the spirit was kind of different. Obviously, there were also more teams. Um, and yet, yeah, just the organization was really great. Um, I mean, it's it's super cell and ESL working together, and they do a really good job, in my opinion. Um, and yeah, it's it's really awesome to be on that stage in front of the camera in the studio and just being able to show the world how good you are and prove everyone wrong who doubts your skill. Um, so yeah, I think there was like an amazing experience and something I would really love to do again. So do, do they put makeup on everyone or just the uh, the hosts? I've always wondered that. <laughs> yeah, they, they put makeup on everyone a little bit because um, I mean, they, they're like studio lights, right? So yeah, yeah. I think, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't really know. I'm not the professional in that area. But I'm guessing they kind of have to put like a little bit on your ba uh, on your face, otherwise it's probably like very shiny. But uh, I yeah. don't know. But but yeah, they they put a little bit of makeup on everyone basically. Okay. On all the hosts and every player basically. So, what advice would you have for a team that's trying to qualify and maybe uh, focus it on the? ESL tournament because I think that's a much easier way to qualify for like the future championships for like season two or whatever once it restarts again. Um, I think that's an easier way to qualify. So, what advice would you have for five people that want to get a team together and try to make a run for the top four? Well, yeah, the, the first thing and for most people, probably the biggest issue is finding a good team or building a good team. Um, because obviously like you can find five guys which are good um, yeah probably easier but they also have to work together as a team um, especially towards base building because I mean not everyone can really build bases um, but those who can't they have to put in the extra work or the extra try time they have into testing and giving feedback and putting that time into that and that's also what we did in Dark Lutus. Um, like for example we had a few guys who build a lot and um, I'm, I'm amongst those but we also had some who don't build at all basically and they just test the bases give feedback and then they tell us what's wrong with the base what is good about the base and then we can tweak accordingly um, so yeah base building is a huge part and then in general you just have to like yeah, just understand yourself, you have to know yourself um, because basically you have to find a way to give the best plans to the best guys, like not everyone is going to hit the same and you can have to like understand each other and know what each other uses to be able to give out those plans and to yeah reach the best score. So I think it's very important that you find a way to work together as a team um, and then, yeah, base building, preparation is key, and um, that's a huge aspect to qualify three years mm -hmm. so. Okay, so obviously, yeah, base building is a big thing, and I think it's overlooked sometimes by like the uh, the mid level clans because uh, it's like the one thing you can really prepare for attacking. You can't prepare beyond that like one hour really. Uh, at least to this specific base that you're going to hit. But anyway, um, I want to give you an opportunity to kind of give your pitch for why uh, Dark Looters should be voted into the uh, the championship because there is the wild card spot um, where the 
the viewers are going to vote uh, the whole Clash community and there's eight clans that are up for nomination uh, obviously there's a lot of deserving clans but I think Dark Looters is definitely one of them as well so maybe you could just take a minute or two uh, and kind of give your pitch to why you think Dark Looters should be voted in yeah for sure uh, thanks for the opportunity um, I think voting for us um, means also to vote for a good entertainment level. As I said, we, we have competed on many stages, we've competed in many competitions. Um, amongst our team, we have um, yeah won many cups. Um, I, for myself, I've been in fake wargism and we won season three's uh, CWL final. We have people who've been in Duck Luther Z, won season four. We have uh, the leader of uh, Jay of uh, Yorio in our clan who won season six, um, and obviously Doug Luters as a clan also won season one and two. So we've been very, um, yeah, we, we've done very, very well um, in those competitions. Um, we can entertain you. We can give you good wars. Um, we have great offense. Um, we scored the. Yeah, best qualifying score in Poland of any clans with uh, 38 stars in July. Um, and yeah, we, we also have great base building. Um, so you can definitely look forward to that if you vote us for the wild card spot. Um, so yeah, I, I think those those are like the reasons. Um, if, if you want a clan um, which will give a good fight to any clan, no matter what, um, yeah, just vote for us, give us our vote, um, which will be in-game. Um, and yeah, I, th I think um, we, we deserve to be there. We've competed um, yeah, such a long time. We've been in Poland twice, we put up good scores, and um, we, we're always there to, to win. And um, I think that's the reason why everyone should vote for us. Okay, uh, you said the voting options an in-game feature. Yeah, um, it's not quite sure yet how they're going to manage because I've heard that some clans. I'm not going to mention any names, but some clans are apparently creating like a ton of accounts because they think they can vote through that. <laughs> but I highly, I, I highly doubt that. I think they will probably put in some town hall. A regulation, for example, only tunnel nine and up can vote, or only tunnel eight and up can vote, um, to stop people from doing what they apparently are trying to do right now. Um, so yeah, I think it will be an in-game feature. Um, I'm not quite sure how they're going to make it, but um, I, th I at least hope they put some a regulation in there that only a certain town hall can vote, um, because I think that's probably the best way to ensure people don't create a ton of accounts um, or yeah, just have some yeah. bots or whatever. And I think, so you'd, I think have to, you'd have to create a lot of accounts to even make a difference because there's so yeah, many I, people. I, I guess, but I mean, people are still trying to cheat and um, yeah, therefore I think it's, it's good that they uh, hopefully do that. At least that's what I've heard and I really hope they follow through in that and yeah, implement that in the vote. Okay. And yeah, yeah, it will be in game probably next week um, on the tenth to seventeenth, but that's not confirmed yet. Yeah, I'll be sure to uh, update viewers on the the situation as it develops. Um, okay, so as we kind of move towards the last few questions, I just want to get some of your some of your input just on the game in general. Um, at Town Hall Twelve, which is what I think you deal with mostly it's where all the esports is at not all the esports but a lot of it a lot of the top levels at town hall 12 right now um how do you think it's balanced is there anything that's overpowered anything too weak any changes you'd like to see the town hall 12. um okay for me personally i think that's the second best matter or balance um which has been in the game i think for me personally the best was I think that was uh, yeah probably two, three years ago now when Tono 10 was kind of like the peak and Tono 10 was really hard and was very balanced. Um, that was like the best yeah balance for me. But I think this matter is also very nice. Like it's it's balanced, it's hard, but it's not impossible. Um, 
so yeah, I think it's it's a good balance right now. One thing I think which is a little bit too strong is the warden ability. Um, I think those eight seconds are just a little bit too much. Um, you can basically like still miss it, like you just press it like way too early, and still nothing dies to the torn hole. Yeah. Um, just because the eight seconds are like huge. Um, and yeah, I think um, many people might not agree with, with me on that, but I think, for example, some troops like the Golem or um, yeah, not no, nah, not really the Witch, but like for example, the Golem are a bit too weak. I mean, they've been buffed and buffed over again, but they're just not usable at, at Tono 12, in my opinion, at least in most cases. Like obviously. You can always use on on the right base. You can use anything, um, but in most cases, golden are kind of useless. And um, yeah, so maybe some change like that like kill squad is more appealing again. But also, it kind of works obviously with the CC and a lot of people run hounds CC. So that's also, of course, another reason why people don't really do kill squads. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I'm in general, you. I think the balance. The balance is really good at the moment. Yeah, I'm with you on the warden's ability. Um, I think that's the when it got when you got to level forty warden. I think it was unnecessary. It should have stayed at like level thirty. Um, what? Yeah, what? I, what I love, what I really like about the new warden is him on defense. Though I think it's such a cool way to do, make queen charges harder because he hits. Like he hits, I think, yeah. Like that than zaps HP. hard when he when he shoots his little laser. Yeah, and and I think that's really good because I mean queen charges are fun. Like don't get me wrong, I I, I really like doing queen charges, but I also like it to be hard. And I think that warden change really changed a lot against queen charges. Like sometimes you just look at a base and you're like, oh, there's the warden. Okay, let's not do that charge there, and. I think that's really great about the level 40 warden, but on offense he's a little bit too strong in my opinion. Like the warden ability is just a little bit too much. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, so if you're if you're looking at a base to attack it, um, this this is always a tricky question to ask people. And when I make videos about this type of thing, I also kind of have trouble putting into words briefly because there's so much that goes on that just takes experience but when you're looking at a base that you're considering how to attack um, what are the key things you're looking for uh, I guess this would be at Town Hall 12 as well what like what's the the, the key things is it the Town Hall the Queen the Eagle where they are relative to each other uh, what what really matters well, I'm, I'm more of a ground attacking guy, um, so I would definitely look for the Queen and CC and Eagle. Um, doesn't have to, I, I don't have to get all of those um, with, for example, my Queen charge or Kill Squad or whatever. Um, but yeah, since, since I prefer Queen charges mostly, um, I kind of look obviously where the queen is because you most of the times want the queen if it's not a for example minor queen charge um and then you kind of also have to look for the town hall at town hall 12 especially in those competitions where you only have one hit because you have to get the town hall list right. no like you can't just plan and then be like yeah i will got get the town hall eventually doesn't really work like that you need to be sure you get the town hall um so yeah at town hall 12 you have to plan getting the town hall either with your kill squad or like your opener queen shot whatever it is or with your troops and also be safe about it like you you can't just say okay yeah i will have a back end slammer and then there's a sweeper just pushing your slammer away you have yeah. to be like sure sure about it that you can get the town hall so um yeah I, I mean as you mentioned queen cc eagle town hall those are definitely the keys and then, of course, you also, if you get extra value, like the BK or the Inferno Tower, uh, that can also help. But I think if you get those key um, structures um, and then you get key a good pathing, you, for example, also don't need the BK even on the Hog ra Raid. Even if the BK is up and you have good uh, pathing, the Hogs can kill the um, King in the end. 
So yeah, those key structures and then good path and it's probably what I look for first if I plan ahead. Yeah, and uh, if I can weigh in also, I would say, yeah, for simplicity, there's a couple main attack strategies I'm always looking to use. Uh, I think you mentioned it, Kill Squad or Sui Hero Hogs, if you can grab the Town Hall really easily, maybe get the King as well. And then there's decent pathing through the rest of the base, it's not too wide. I think that's one of the most reliable strategies right now. Um, I think I also tend to look for bat spell if there's a place where there's not much coverage by the multi infernos or wizard towers. How can I make that into a dragon or a P.E.K.K.A. Uh, type smash and then bat spell the rest of the base? Um, and then finally, I think if the queen is right next to the eagle and there's like the base is relatively compact, it's not covered by air defenses. I think, and then the, the CC isn't covering a certain area, you can use your heroes uh, on the outside and send in sl uh, the slammer with E-drag, and that's also a great thing if you can get both the eagle and the queen. Um, yeah, just I, uh, Go ahead. Yeah, I, I also like to plan those hits. I'm not really a guy who does those hits, okay. but I mean, I, I could do them too, um, but I think there are in our clan guys who are just better at it. At, for example, at Lalo, like I can do Lalo, but if there's other people who are just better um, at Lalo, then I prefer to give them those plans. Um, but yeah, I think the e drag Kill Squad or also Electron, both of those are really strong. Um, and I really like, like when, when they added e drags I was like, okay, what, what is this? Like, what is this supposed to be? But now I'm really g glad that they added the true. And um, yeah, I, I really like the addition. Like it's it's like a new layer. It's a completely different attack to anything else. Um, but yeah, it's it makes makes the gu uh, the game a lot more fun. Also for building because I think I mean some people are complaining it's um, hard to defend everything, but I think that's what makes it so fun because you kind of have to yeah already see what the others are going to do when you build the base. So you can have to predict what's going to happen on your base um, when you try to defend and I think that's yeah really strategic and that's what I like about the game. Yeah, yeah. like I was watching the, uh, you mentioned E-Drags, the last qualifier with Nova and INTZ in the finals. I think one guy just tripled, just crushed bases several times with just mass E-Drag. Um, and yeah, I think there's really no excuse for getting tripled by E-Drags just because you, you're able to have your buildings spread apart with the two tile gaps to prevent the chain damage. So you always got to be yep. aware of that. There's certain things, you know, spring traps for hogs um, and other things that's like you want to have each of these features in your base to defend each of these different popular strategies. Um, and that kind of segues into my last question, which is I just want to... Uh, ask on the other side for base building. Um, I, I believe you're, you've built bases frequently, and uh, what's kind of the first thing you do when designing a base? That's a question I get a lot. Like, what's the first types of buildings I should place? Um, I just don't know where to start. How do I start when building a base? Uh, I guess at Town Hall 12. Um, for me personally, okay, back. Like the first thing is I want to be the base uh, different from the other bases I built, like every time I just, yeah, try something new, because I don't know, if if, you, if I start the same on every base, I kind of like end up the same every time, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is uh, kind of weird. But yeah, at, at Town Hall 12, I guess you kind of have to start with the Town Hall. Um, you can still do changes afterwards, but I most of the time have like an idea in my head where I, how I want to place the Torn Hall, um, how far is the Eagle, CC, Queen away, and then I start from that, basically place the Inferno Towers um, and the wards, obviously, and then I kind of like shape the base. But for me, it's like an ongoing process. Like if, if I drop the Torn Hall at a certain space and then I drop the Eagle, then it doesn't mean then when I, when I finish the base that those two buildings are still in the same area. Like I could just say, okay, I really like this base, but I move the tunnel from 12 o'clock to three o'clock and completely change basically half the base. And then that's 
how I like the bass. So I'm I'm very picky um, about my basses. I, I change them a lot and I keep changing them constantly. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think yeah, with, with in this matter you kind of have to start with the Torn Hall because it's pretty much the most important building um, besides Eagle probably. Um, yeah, so you kind of want those to basically, yeah, you, you want to know where do you want the the town hall and the eagle, how far should they be away? Um, I mean, there are bases where the eagle is basically just one compartment behind the town hall. And then there's bases where the eagle is pretty much on the other side of the base. Um, so yeah, I think those two buildings is kind of where, where I start and then I built my base around that setup. There seems to have been a shift in the meta where uh, the town hall was never like in the middle of the base. It, it was always like towards the outside, not not queen walkable unless you charge in. But there's been a shift where it's now like more of an open compartment, more of a troll type base where you might have like a bunch of Teslas in kind of storages and uncertain pathing, a bunch of gaps where the town hall is ultra exposed, but there could be a bunch of traps around it. Uh, do you think that's a, a better way to go, or is that base going to be tripled too easily by a good attacker? Um, I mean, there's, like, it kind of depends. Um, there are some really good bases with the tunnel outside, and I also built some of those um, with the tunnel outside, because it offers, basically, to use more walls, for example, in the base, because you don't really have to use the walls to build around the town hall. Um, so you have a lot more walls to actually build in the base and you only have those like outside walls or whatever to isolate the town hall so you can't easily sue the town hall um, and then you have like plenty of space and uh, walls to make compartments where you usually probably wouldn't have the walls for mm -hmm. and then also you kind of force the attacker from to come from a certain side because coming from the upper side is always risky like most people wouldn't opt to do that because if something goes wrong there's no way you get the tunnel especially like let's just say there's all the teslas and the um, and skelly traps and the tornado right in front of the town hall you can't get the tunnel whatever you do like you won't get it if you start your queen for example your queen church on the other side of the base and something goes wrong yeah that's probably one star if, if you get the one star, you, I mean, you still need to get the 50% most likely. So um, you kind of force the people to go in from different, uh, from, from the sides. And then also, for example, on, on Packer Smash, if you can isolate your Torn Hall so that the Packer Smash in the base can't get the Torn Hall from inside the base, that's also like a risky thing for the attacker because even if he sends like a slammer from the Torn Hall, there just needs to be some Sam's and the tornado and the slammer won't do anything. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's a good option. Um, I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't say it's a must do on every base um, because there are other ways. But I think it's a good option and something people should consider if they build bases, um, especially if you want to build like a variety of different base building styles. It's definitely something you should do. All right, well, there we have it. Um, we're going to have to leave it there. Sir Iron, thanks for coming on. I uh, really appreciate it, uh, talking over Clash and a little bit about your team uh, in ESL. Anything else you want to say before we uh, wrap up the video? Uh, thanks for having me. And, of course, I hope um, everything everyone votes for us, for the Gruters. And, yeah, we, we're happy with every vote, and we appreciate every support. And yeah, thanks a lot. All right, yeah, thank you for coming on. And uh, that will conclude this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Went a little bit longer than planned, but these types of videos always do when you have a, a good conversation over Clash. But anyway, that is it for today. Be sure to uh, look into the voting system once it's active and consider Dark Looters with your vote. I will see you guys next time. Until then, Bisectatron and Sir Iron out.